last episode of this series, I'm going to be talking about the Thermal Spires. Anyways, just get right into it. Let's start with Altera. And also newest, basically logs and communications. Mining site delivery has Parvin and Fred. Fred and Parvin are talking, and Fred has delivered a package to the mining site. Then they get talking about some alien science. Parvin thinks it's a bunch of BS, while Fred thinks it's pretty interesting. Parvin thinks the scientists have too much control. And I quote, I'm serious. Look around you. This mining facility extracts every mineral you scientists use to make their equipment. Their bases, their scanners, even your little sea trucks. Talk for a bit more and then just says, Bah, tell Lillian she's wasting her time. There's nothing down here but workers, and we already know we don't spark her curiosity. We also have these two text logs, the Aurora wreckage located, survivors confirmed, and the was unexplained ion signatures linked to the Aurora's disappearance. To be honest, I don't really want to read all this out, so we're gonna go on to research now. Let's start off with the alien data. The alien statue has unknown origins. It's made out of a block of pure copper ore and resembles ancient Greek mythology. It's either a cultural marker, a religious artifact, or an artistic expression. You can also find the mineral distillery in one of the caves. It extracts minerals out of the water. Let's go on to geological data. We have Argentine, Calvary, and Jelena outcrops here. And don't forget about limestone. We also have the main part of this biome, the hydrothermal spire. They kind of look like chimneys and have a bunch of aquatic life around them. These can actually be seen in real life. You can also find the ore vein here in a couple of the caves. In the copper mining site, which we'll get to in a minute, you can find Ruby. Here is the main home of Cryptosuchus, which is a large shark-like beast. They have defensive bony plate structures, which help them absorb heat from hydrothermal vents along with for protection. They are aggressive and a bit territorial, but they'll kind of be like a dog chasing their own tail while trying to attack you. Kind of like the sand shark, except the sand shark uses it for a different purpose. Sand sharks use it to confuse prey. We don't exactly know why the crypto such as does this. In the copper mining site, along with sometimes outside of it, you can find the good old rock puncher which are a large crustacean on the planet. Which is weird, considering there are not many crustacean, not talking about named creatures or that look like crustaceans, I mean full crustaceans, on the planet. They don't eat big creatures, they actually eat a microorganism. They eat the rock grub, which I will tell you facts about now, then we'll get back to the rock puncher. They have a circular jaw with a bunch of teeth in it. They have five legs and two arms, one huge flipper, and green luminescence, which is for attracting mates. Oh, the rock punchers eat them. The rock puncher uses its arms to both defend itself, since they are very territorial. They also use their arms to dig rocks out of the ground, which rock grubs are usually found on. They will munch away on that meal. They have a hardened chitin claw, or claws, to help them thrust forward. You can also do a small leap in the air, or sea. They are heavily armored and are only eaten by chalicerates and shadow leviathans, basically any leviathan. Those are just some good examples. They are perfectly adapted to caves, with their six legs which can climb up walls. Small herbivores you can find on the shallow side of this biome are the Antarctic peeper, which are a fast prey fish which camouflage against the ice and are highly intelligent in numbers. The arrow ray, which can actually drift into this biome. They eat plankton, they have a fin on their head which has a spike on it. They are most likely related to the boomerang, and they are mostly harmless. Bladder fish, which have a semi-permeable bladder and open-ended vascular tubing. And while well, since we're near the end of this series, you may think I'm done with the bladder fish. <laughs> You are wrong. You can also find the boomerang here. They have serrated teeth, are mostly active during the day, have twin fins, and like I said, 
Like I said, they're most likely related to arrow rays. Some of them also glow a blue luminescence. Discus fish, which also drift into this biome, eat algae and plants. Even though they may not have a defense mechanism, they use their slim bodies to get into cracks and caves, which lets them get away from bigger predators that can't fit in the holes of the cave. Here you can find the feather fish, which are a common species found in various biomes, and their coloring is very distinct. Their belly is a bright white, which is like a reflection to sunlight, making it invisible from its belly. And with that, in the copper cave, you have the red feather fish, which are black and red for camouflage. Considering they're found in more cavish biomes, they can't blend in with the sunlight. That's why they're that color. Triops has three eyes, and they're named after their triopical vision, or trioptical. They are bottom feeders that hoover up and crunch down on small invertebrates. You can see 240 degrees. Now, before I get onto flora, I want to explain the copper mining site for a bit. Copper is near Delta Station in the deepest point of this biome. This is where you'll find the biggest rock puncher population, red featherfish, triopses, and a bunch of rock grubs. Here you can find pronsu and many minerals. You can find rock puncher eggs, crypto such as eggs near here, a habitat builder fragment, the pronsu jump upgrade, diamonds, copper wire, gold, and lithium, a bunch more fragments, but let's get onto the data boxes. In our first one, you'll find the moon pool. Deeper down, you'll also find the thermal plant fragment. Go a bit past that and you will finally find our second one, the scanner room, which are very useful for finding minerals. Then go past the Pronsu docking bay and go to our final destination, where you will find our final data box with the headlamp on it, which is extra light on land and the sea. Not that useful, but hey, it's still something. Anyways, now for the flora. The Trinity barnacle is found near sea vents and geothermal hotspots. They are often found in clusters and have shell casings. This is also the place where you can find the hardy cave bush, which are a species of cave bush, but much smaller. The oxygen plant, which has a symbiotic relationship with pinacaris and pinklings, give you a couple of oxygen and have a bioluminescent floating bulb. You can also find the radiant sieve coral here, but not in the coral category, surprisingly. You can find the normies here, like the red war, which is a common plant, which is eaten by many small herbivores, which also filters out stuff, and the luminescent violet bayou. And that is pretty much it. Guys, sorry if I sound a bit sleepy in this video, I just got back from vacation, so I'm pretty exhausted. Sorry if I missed anything, and I will see you later. Okay, peace.